Stocks are wavering heading into the close as they try to recover from yesterday's sell-off. Investors looking ahead to Friday's jobs report as a key indicator of the first rate cut, which is expected to happen at the Fed meeting just a couple weeks from today. Joining me now with his playbook is Wells Fargo's Chris Harvey. Welcome back. Thank you. Let me first get your thoughts just generally on this market activity yep. over the last couple of days. What do you think? It's more or less what I would expect. There's a lot of event risk out there, whether it's the Fed, whether it's the election, whether it's... Um, conference season. And with that uncertainty, there should be a bid for risk aversion. And that's pretty much what you're seeing right now. You think there's more of this? Than I think there's more, more volatility, more of a pullback. Yeah, I think what we saw with the ISM manufacturing yesterday, the respondents were saying, hey, we're worried about monetary policy. We don't know what it is. We're worried about rates. We're worried about the, the election. And we're going to wait. We're going to slow down activity. We're going to slow down purchasing. And, and when you see that, you should see a bid to risk aversion. So this is pretty typical. This is what you should expect. Do you buy it? Eventually, you do. I, I think. What does that know, mean? What does eventually mean? Uh, so eventually means. So, so there's a belief out here you should sell the first cut. We don't think that's true. What you should be doing is buy the election. If you look at the returns one month out, excuse me, one year out from the election, you're looking at double-digit returns across the board, right? And this no matter will, no matter what. Well, not it's it's not a guarantee, but for the last six. Uh, six presidential election cycles, you've had double-digit returns across the board. And that's, that's pretty good, right? It's, again, it's not a guarantee, but that's pretty good. I mean, when I say no matter what, I mean no matter which side wins? Yeah, no, no matter which side wins. It's just, it's this belief that what happens before the election, everything slows down, I'm not sure, I don't know how to plan, and, and what you see after is I have certainty. There are different betas, but ultimately I have certainty now, and now I can move forward, now I can plan. What do I do with the pullback in mega cap tech? How, how, how do you view it? So what we did, we have a signature picks portfolio. We had some cash laying on the sidelines, and we just added Adobe, and we added Microsoft today, right? So what we're saying is, yeah, we can jump into some of these names. Um, we think they're pretty good risk awards, not across the board, but a couple, Microsoft being one of them. And what we're really positive on, we're positive on the communication space. We've been positive on the communication space all year long. Some big cap tech in there. And we think it's a pretty good value. So you're a dip buyer. We are a dip buyer. We've been a dip buyer on momentum and some growth names in, in recent weeks. Um, what I would say is that the rotation, this belief about small caps, we still think that needs to get worse before it gets better. But with things that are pretty good risk rewards, yeah, we think you can buy them with you know, with pretty good confidence. Do you think there are enough dip buyers out there? Uh, are there enough dip buyers you out know, there? No, because these stocks, this is not the first time that these stocks have looked this way. Yeah. But the dip buyers have not let them go down too far. Yeah. They've come in and pushed them back meaningfully higher. Are, yeah. are they still out there to do that again? Or do we have renewed yeah. questions about the growth rates, the spending rates, yeah. and the ROI on no. the money? It's a great question. So the belief is... So the way I think about it, the way we phrase it is, has the momentum broken? And the momentum did not break. What happened with momentum, momentum stocks, growth stocks in the middle of the summertime, they bent, but they didn't break. The underlying fundamentals are still strong. One of the things that people keep talking about with small caps is, hey, the expected growth rates are so high or so much higher than the large cap. Yeah, those are the expected. That may not be what you're going to get. What we're going to get, where we feel comfortable, is in those mega cap tech, in those growth names. Those are, those are the names where revisions are going up, not down. Okay, so you don't believe then in the, in the broadening story lasting that, that long? We, no. The durability of it, you sound like right. you're questioning. Yeah, what we think is up to capitalization should be a little bit more balanced than we've been in, in the last six, 12 months. But this belief that small caps are just going to take off, we think that's not the right call. The, the economy is not strong enough for small caps. You need a really strong economy for that to work, and we're just not seeing signs of that. You think earnings and expectations for future earnings are, are too optimistic or no? So, okay, a couple of things about, let's just talk about S&P earnings. What you're seeing is the winners keep winning. So the bigger, the higher margin businesses are gaining more and more market share. It's not because the economy is really strong, it's because these stocks are doing well and their contribution is increasing. This is why mid cap and small caps aren't doing well, they're more tied to the economy, right? These are more tied to those secular trades and so numbers are going higher. What we're seeing is we're seeing negative revisions for small caps for, for mid caps, but we're seeing positive revisions for some of your larger caps and, and your mega caps. And it's really a difference between the secular story and the economy.